Breaking news now. A teenager is shot several times during an apparent home invasion. Happened on Rio Vista Drive. That's up in the Madison neighborhood on the north side of Nashville. And that's where we find News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy at the precinct there for the police. And Dan, pretty serious injuries. Do they have anything figured out on this at this point? No, still working through all that. They're hopeful they'll be able to talk to the victim later today, but that's all depending on how he does uh, during surgery. And this morning at the hospital, he was taken to Skyline Medical Center with very serious injuries after police say he was shot multiple times in his torso becoming the victim of this home invasion about 1:30 this morning. That's when this all began over on Rio Vista Drive in the Madison area. Uh, police say this man, this 18 year old was inside his apartment when three gunmen barged in and that's when he was shot. Uh, but police still don't know if this was targeted, if this was random, if anything was taken during that home invasion or what exactly the motive was behind it. That's what they're all working to piece together at this time. And again, hopeful they'll be able to talk to the victim at some point. Uh, they were going around door to door to see if anybody was awake and may have seen or heard anything last night. But at this hour, we don't know anything more than police searching for three gunmen, one of whom was armed with a pistol. Reporting live this morning from the Madison Police Precinct, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. Dan, thanks. More breaking news now. A man's in the hospital after being shot at a North Nashville home. Neighbors were calling 911 when they heard the gunfire on Judd Drive around 1130. They found the crime scene, but they didn't find the victim. A little while later, a man walked into Skyline Medical Center with a gunshot wound. Figured that's where he must have come from. We're told he'll be all right. He is not cooperating with investigators. As the story develops, we'll update you on the facts. A suspected bank robber waking up in jail this morning. Thanks to a pretty smart officer, officials arrested David Williams minutes after a holdup at the SunTrust Bank on Dickerson Pike. Investigators say that 24 year old robbed the place yesterday afternoon and then he took off. Here's what's different than every other robbery we've reported. He changed clothes, really thought he had everyone fooled, but an officer still recognized him quickly took him into custody. Smart work by the officer. Williams is in the Metro jail. He'll face federal bank robbery charges today. Amy. Well, happening now, the search is on for a Tennessee teen believed to be in danger. This is 13 year old Taisha Howard. TBI agents say the 13 year old was last seen in Jackson wearing pajama pants and carrying a dark blue blanket. She was spotted getting into a white Toyota four door pickup truck driven by a man with dreadlocks and a cast on his right foot. Call 1-800-TBI. Find if you've seen Taisha or the driver. And a tragic shooting investigation that's happening now in Waverly. Yeah, domestic situation here. Police have charged a man with second degree murder for the death of his wife. Investigators went Sunday night to a home on Curtis Drive because neighbors heard gunfire. That's never good. When they arrived, they found 22 year old Brandy Shear dead in her driveway. Her young looking husband right here, Charles Shear, is now charged with her death. Police believe both the victim and the suspect fired shots during that argument. Well, new information now on a fire that destroyed this big historic home in McMinnville. Investigators say the Bostic house may have been set on fire on purpose. The Southern Standard reporting the blaze broke out on the back porch where there's no electricity. A $5,000 reward is being offered. Call the arson hotline 1-800-762-3017 if you can help in any way. Amy? Well, hundreds of thousands of people came to the mid state to watch the coast to coast total solar eclipse and well now they've all got to get home and some of them took to the roads and others are hitting the skies. New Show 5's Blake Rosnowski live this morning Nashville International Airport and my goodness you I mean it's still a busy place this morning. Yes, Amy, it has definitely been a very steady morning. We did just catch a little bit of a lull, so we're seeing a little less people behind me here. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're moving quickly. I did just check over at the monitor a few minutes ago, and I saw that wait times for uh, the security lines are 15 to 20 minutes. So you can definitely still expect some backups, and every few minutes we're seeing just a wave of people coming in here. So let's take a look at how many people we are expecting over the past couple of days and the days to come. Yesterday, 20,500 people all coming through on Eclipse Day. Today, 
They're expecting it to be the busiest, 24,500 people, and that's on par with some of their busiest days that they ever have, and that's for like CMA Fest, Bonnaroo, and when the Preds were doing their Stanley Cup run. Tomorrow, not quite as busy, but still busier than normal. They're expecting about 23,000 people to come and file through. A regular day here is only about 18,000 people, so several thousand more people than normal will be coming through over the next couple of days. So again, not looking too bad right now, but I do recommend still probably trying to leave your house a little bit earlier and checking on your flights too. We have seen several delays and cancellations. Just giving yourself all the time you need to make sure that you can get home safely. Live at the International Airport, Blake Rosnowski, News Channel 5. All right, Blake, thanks so much. And many people may be headed to the doctor with eye injuries today because they looked at the eclipse without their protective glasses. Damage can occur if you didn't wear them during the eclipse. Doctors at Vanderbilt say you may experience symptoms right away or even hours after the eclipse and some of those symptoms to look out for eye irritation, blurred vision, blind spots in your vision or altered color vision. Doctors say children may experience the same. If your child's complaining of some headaches or some light sensitivity, that's not indicative of a significant problem. If your child complains that they can't see something out of one of their eyes or out of both of their eyes, or if they have a blind spot, when they try to look at your face, for example, and they can't see your ear and it's consistent like that, that's something that needs to be evaluated. The Vanderbilt Eye Institute is opening special clinics today to help people with eye injuries. For more details on those clinics, just go to newschannel5.com. All right, if you did not get a great view of the eclipse yesterday, you can make some travel plans for 2024. The next total solar eclipse visible in the U.S. and you see the ribbon across the states right there. It's going to happen April the 8th. It'll be in Paducah, Kentucky. That's the closest place that will have totality to the Nashville area. Or you can go to my alma mater, SIU Carbondale. Uh -huh. If you're interested, book those hotels. Keep your eclipse glasses handy because they are still going to be good if they have that dash two, the iOS dash two on the glasses, which most of them do. All right, in the meantime, you can relive the Coast to Coast Eclipse right now on our website. You can go see clips from our Eclipse special that we did from 1 to 2 yesterday afternoon, which was fantastic. Photo galleries, sky-fi footage, and a time lapse as well. That's newschannel5.com.